Welcome to the uh, last talk of the afternoon, I believe. Um, my name is Uli, and uh, let's talk about Line. An alternative title for the app, uh, for the talk, could be How Can We Build Mobile Apps with Python? Um, I'm German. I live in Singapore since about eight years. I travel to Thailand a lot of times. Uh, professionally speaking, I work for a company called Axway. We do API management, middleware, and integration, quite prominent in Southeast Asia. I run uh, the Redis user group in Singapore, and I also run a nonprofit called Soton Kitchen. You can see some of my some of my tags. So I'm Python since quite some time. I've done lots of container stuff, um, do quite a bit of hacking in the data world these days. You'll see some of this also in the lightning talk that we have in an hour's time. Right, um, today's talk, times are changing. I guess you all know that. I'm pretty happy that most of you are actually listening to my talk right now. Um, who in the audience has line? Can I see a show of hands? Wonderful, get them ready because you'll be part of the demo. Um, so yes, the times are changing. So this is not just a technology uh, situation, it's also something that we notice how technology becomes uh, a substantial element of everybody's lives, right? App development is also changing, right? We, we had a few talks also yesterday about how do we break up monolithic applications and how do we uh, build microservices, distributed applications. And in many cases, we're talking about API as the glue to stitch these things together. Wh who's worked with JSON, REST, API? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, that's quite a good number of people. So to some of you, there might not be a lot of new things uh, from a technical perspective, but I hope it's gonna be interesting from a use case. Um, meet Murphy, right? Uh, this is a, a buddy of mine that I wanna introduce to you. Um, my friends at Microsoft built, built this one. It's a bot that you can add on, on Skype, on Messenger, on Telegram. I've not seen line there yet, but it's just a matter of time. Anybody used Murphy yet? Nobody? I'm, I'm sure today you will. So I'm not giving you a live demo. We don't have much time for this one. But in essence, what you do, you add the bot on your favorite messenger. You just pick one of those. And you ask a question. Again, you're using the app on your phone, Facebook Messenger, Skype, Telegram. What if Uli Hitzel was a superhero and the bot takes a second and does this? Isn't that incredible? So I think a few years ago, this would have been considered a magic trick. Today, we are pretty much used to some really crazy stuff. I'll give you another example. What if Obama was German? Incredible. No? So there is no human uh, sitting there in the back end doing some Photoshop. It's a machine doing that. Right? And we want to talk about today how we can enable you to do these kinds of things. So in fact, what I'm proposing, I mean, you've seen, you've seen my slide earlier with all these people in the real world using their mobile phones all the time. How much Python is in there? How many people are actually building mobile apps with Python? I would like to say, yes, I do, but I, in fact, I don't. So my proposal is to say, you have so many puzzle pieces out there. You have so many services. You've seen talks in this conference about PyTorch, about all kinds of smart services, cognitive, big data, language processing, right? What we've seen here is an example of just this. So why don't you just pick your Lego pieces that do the job that you want to do? You glue them together with APIs, and you just use the user interfaces that people know, that people have installed in their phone already. So they don't necessarily have to install yet another app for this, right? And why should you do this? I just thought I'd give you some ideas, right? Let's say you want to do insurance for people in Thailand. Every, I think every auntie has Line Messenger installed, and you don't have to teach your mom how Line works, right? 
So why not give her a chance to do insurance? Like uploading receipts, taking a photo of the car that has an incident, snap a photo and send it to the chatbot. Why not? How about a translation service? There are so many tourists in Thailand, right? Where you actually pick up the phone, you speak into line, and it does translation, it gives you assistance, because you work in the hospitality sector. What about workforce, HR? I'm sick today, I can't make it, I have a problem, or you send a notification to the people that today lunch break is gonna be a special offer. Yeah? There are so many ideas that you can do. You don't have to be a mobile app developer to build these kinds of things. Yeah, so uh, I've built, uh, uh, it's not as cool as, as Murphy, but I've built a very simple uh, chatbot so we can use it. And so you can also look at the code because it's on, on the GitHub. Um, there was a QR code at the beginning and you'll see it again at the end. If you scan this code, you have um, the GitHub, the slides, uh, a couple of other links, um, basically anything you need. So the moment you're adding this uh, bot to your line account, it comes with a welcome message that you can configure. And um, the only thing actually that it does, it tells you a, a couple of lame jokes randomly. So you, you send a message and it comes back, um, yeah, with a joke, a pun. Um, and that's what we're gonna do now. So. Uh, yeah, this is the moment where I'm uh, giving you the QR code. So anybody in the audience feels like adding this buddy, what I'm gonna do now is, you guys still see my screen. I have my, I have my middleware running on Python Anywhere, which is probably the coolest platform on the planet to run Python stuff on. And you see my terminal is really big. Internet is a little slow. Right, wonderful, okay. So basically the moment you are adding this buddy and you're sending a message, the message should come up here, right? So let's all do this, I'll, I'll also try this on my phone. I'll, um, yeah. So be careful, I hope you're not uh, sending anything inappropriate. This is gonna be recorded. Okay, who's gonna send the first message? Anybody has anything? Oh, what does that say? I see something in Thai. Okay, hang on. This is extremely, this is extremely slow. <laughs> oh, back to the QR code, of course. Okay. Let's crash the system. Does it work? Anybody has a has added the body already? It doesn't? Yeah? Someone has it? Okay. Okay, this is um, a little awkward. You see there is a couple of messages already. Hey bro. Okay. You see there is messages coming in. Let's not spend too much time on this. I'll just go back to the slides. 
and show you how it works. Right? So, that was the idea that you see something like this. But by the way, what does that second word mean? Uh, free cash. Free cash? Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. What do, we, what do we need for this hack? Right? So you've seen already that there is line in the picture. Um, I'm using a very simple web framework called Bottle. It's quite popular. I'm sure you've seen this. Um, I'm using the requests library, which has the most interesting logo in the Python world, I think. And, and I'm running this on Python anywhere to actually work with line and uh, debug the requests I'm using Postman. For those of you who know APIs, Postman is no stranger. How does it work from a data flow, right? So obviously you have people who are sending messages using their line messenger, and this is received by the API. This message is triggering a webhook to my application, running on Python anywhere, in, bo uh, in bottle, and it's sending the reply using a reply token that the request in the webhook uh, gave to me. And I'm using this one um, to trigger the message back to the user. Right? So those of you who added the body uh, might have gotten a response with a joke. Um, and of course, pretty much like, like Murphy earlier, what you saw, you're totally free in your Python code to trigger all kinds of magic. So natural language processing, cognitive services, image recognition, weather lookups, your own, your own databases, whatever you want, right? Put that into the code. How do you go about it? So you go to the line developer website, you sign up for a free account. I think the, the quota is like a thousand requests per minute. If you're a developer, that should get you going as a start. Secondly, you configure the application. Um, you get a channel secret, which you basically use for the authentication in your requests. And the important part is where you configure line to say whenever there is a new event, somebody sends an emoji, somebody sends an audio message, a text message, I want this webhook to be triggered. Requires SSL, so it's, it's safe. That's where you put in, in this case, this is something that's running on my Python anywhere. Right? So this is a, I've used request bin to capture the response, so I see what is actually arriving, what is the data that I'm seeing, and you see here, I'm getting a reply token and I'm getting the message uh, from line that tells me, as the Python application, a new message came in, a new event happened, somebody just uh, added your bot, maybe you want to send him an email, these kinds of things. Um, then you check out the documentation and see, right, this is um, the message that I need to send back. This is the format, this is the JSON object that I need to prepare. So it's, in essence, it's a reply token that can be used exactly one time. That is used to identify um, the unique message that you're replying to, and basically the text. And in this case, it's an array that you're sending back. Um, in my case, because, well, there was no swagger, so what I was doing is that I actually uh, played with Postman to figure out, okay, how does the request exactly work? When do I get a response? So I was basically doing this manually um, at the beginning. So you see the, I'm putting in the authorization header, which is the channel secret. Content type has to be application JSON, otherwise uh, you'll have an error. And uh, yeah, in the payload, you basically uh, put the reply token and the message, hello, what's cooking? Now the cool stuff is, uh, in this case, you don't even have to code the Python lines yourself because Postman does that for you. So the moment you figured out how uh, the HTTP REST JSON API works and you've done it in Postman, you can go to Postman and say, um, yeah, please, please generate the code for me. So you see there is all kinds of... Uh, interesting programming languages and with Python being the most important one, you can even uh, select the request library. I will say that the code that comes out of it is not the most beautiful one. So in this case, it actually just uh, generates a hard-coded string input where you would actually do 
a JSON object and, and then put, feed this into requ uh, the requests library. But uh, that's the automatically generated one that just works. And you can use it in your code. I hope you can see that. But uh, in essence, um, there is just a few lines of code that you need. So in my case, since I'm using a bottle on Python anywhere, I'm just having a post method called PyCon um, that is receiving the JSON payload um, in the post body of the request. And then I'm extracting the, re the reply token and the message. And as you saw, uh, hopefully, the messages were also logged into a debug log file that I was just uh, uh, tailing, tailing out in the, in the terminal. And that's how you reply to the message. So you basically have the HTTPS endpoint of line. Um, the access token is something that you uh, get from the GUI that I showed you earlier. So you copy paste that in. And in this case, um, the text that you send is up to you. In this case, I added a random joke generator that uh, it basically has 10, 15 short puns that are being added. Um, content type, application JSON, and the authorization. And the only thing that you need to do is say, okay, request library, this is all what you need. Fire it off, here you go. Yeah, this is almost the end of the talk already. Um, just wanted to show you something. I know we are talking about Monty Python. This is somehow related with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, a while ago, when I was at Microsoft, I built uh, that depressed little robot called Marvin and put him on Twitter. He's in deep sleep at the moment. But in essence, well, you'll find the code on GitHub as well. It's, it's not something really uh, specifically awesome. It's just an approach to say, let's not talk about artificial intelligence, but artificial attitude. So he'll, he'll actually come up with random stuff himself. And when you ask him, what's the weather in Bangkok? He'll say, dude, it's, it's 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. You have nothing better to do than chatting with me, right? So that there was something that I've worked on as well. Okay, um, that's it for the talk already. Um, giving you back some time and also giving you some time uh, for questions. Uh, if anybody has uh, questions, I'll bring the mic over. Any, any questions? Uh, hi. Um, uh, for the chatbot, right, um, there's, a, there's a, a problem that uh, the, the bot may not be able to recognize the past sentences Right, so like when we talk about uh, uh, if we want the, if the, the bot offer that we, they have the right shirt or blue, uh, uh, sorry, uh, blue shirt or red shirt, right? And then the, the people who's shabby the bot may say like, uh, we want the first one. Then the bot may not be able to recognize what is the first or what is the latter or, or or something that have to be traced back to the previous uh, sentence, yes. In, right? Yes, context awareness. So, yeah, yeah. So how do you handle yes, that? Exactly. To uh, it took sorry, it took me a moment to uh, uh, get the question. It's about context awareness. So let's say I'm asking where is the best pizza in town, and the bot will say it's here. And my next question is, yeah, okay. So so how do I get there? And and for a human being. That's a very normal question. How do I get there? For a chatbot, it's not a complete instruction, right? How do I get there? Where? And then the question is about the context. So some of the uh, language understanding toolkits, so Lewis AI, uh, Lewis.ai is, is one of them, where, where you can chain up these requests, where you can basically uh, uh, have a short-term memory for, for these chatbots. So, so first of all, what you do is it's a continuous <laughs> It's a continuous learning exercise, right? Um, for me as a human being, I have 50 different ways to say the same thing, right? I want to search for news on Donald Trump. So I have an intention and a topic, right? And in, the, in, the, in Lewis.ai, for example, you have a way to continuously teach the system what are the variants. And there might be ways where there is new messages coming in and 
you as, a, as an administrator, as I'll say the coach of the bot, will look into the logs sometimes and say, oh yeah, if you ever see this message again, it means this. So you're basically matching the, in, the intention, which is a function, to a topic which is a search um, pattern. And you are also able to, to make this context aware that you put it back to the previous sentence. So you can basically digest both in your code. Thank you. Sure. There was another question here. Uh, if I send you a picture in line, do you have an example? Or? Uh, so the question is, uh, if somebody sends me a picture in line, do I have an example? Um, I haven't built this yet. This is actually a use case that I'm doing at the moment as well. Because uh, um, we work with um, a couple of file sharing tools in the enterprise world. And in our world, this is called Simplicity. Very simple to OneDrive, Google Drive, and Dropbox. Um, that people use at the big companies. But over here, everybody uses Line. So I'm actually working on this at the very moment, that you have people who are looking to access these files using Line Messenger and upload something. I don't have a demo right now. OK. There is no more questions. OK. Thank you and very I, much. Thank you very much.